Yo guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of the FM Reboot, it's episode number 34 and today returning on the back of a collapse in our last season with a brand new season here and more than you, of course kicking off with a transfer special. So yeah, today's episode to see how pre-season went, uh, some interesting stuff behind the scenes at more you, and again the much loved transfer special as well. So without further ado, let's get to that first. So after a disappointing collapse at the end of the season, I felt we needed to make some changes in the summer. I mentioned in the season finale, we're going to go new gen and regen hunting. We certainly have done, no doubt about that. And there has been some pretty big changes over the summer. So as per usual, we'll start with the departures. Uh, were there any that shown at the end of last season? Because I don't know how this works now, but uh, no, there's not really apart from a uh, youngster. But um, yeah, okay, so uh, the departure this season, as you can see, uh, a few youngsters leaving, mostly on freeze, but uh, only only two real departures that are worth talking about are right here. Daniel Pedence going to Udinese. Um, very decent winger. Very decent indeed. Could also play through the middle as well at times. But... To be honest, as I brought someone else in, and I think you already know who it's going to be, I was okay letting him go. He only had one year left in his contract, so you get 20 million for him at 27 years old. It's not a bad deal at all. So he's gone to the Serie A, and I think that's a decent sale there. And also the big sale, this guy right here. Now, I talked about it last season. I said if a bit of 25 mil came in, I was going to let him go. Connor Cody said he wanted to move on for a new challenge. And in the end, he's gone to the Serie A alongside the Dents. He's gone to Crotone. We didn't get 25 mil. We got 17 million. But at 30 years old, due to turn 31 during the season, I was totally fine keeping him as a captain, as a dressing room leader. But now third choice centre half being Eric Bailly and Big Chris, I was okay letting him go. And in the end, to be honest, again, just out of Pedence, I think that's a really decent sale there. So Connor Cody, the club captain, is gone. And we've had to replace him and give the armband to someone new. Any, any guesses who it might be? I think you might know. But as of new signings, uh, quite a lot in the summer. Very busy window. Our most expensive one to save as well. And like I said, I was going new gen and regen hunting. Let me show you who I picked up. So there are nine signings to show you in the summer window, and most of them teenagers. And let me begin with this one here. Uh, Miguel Angel Gutierrez, uh, a central midfielder, signed on a compensation deal. Uh, I think it's could it could rise like one to two million pounds uh, based on how he gets on over the course of his career. But um, yeah, he looks okay. He was a regular in America's uh, first team last year in Mexico, 18 years old, and could be all right in the future. Unfortunately, as I posted on Twitter this morning, um, there were a couple of like amazing wonder kids, certified wonder kids I wanted to sign, but sadly, uh, they were snapped up by bigger clubs instead. Just one of those things you've got to deal with in FM. But uh, the next one I'll show you is this guy, another central midfielder, Eduardo Ferreira, the board will happy because it's another Portuguese player coming in. Again, already some decent stats, you know, 16 first touch, 16 technique, 16 teamwork, 17 work rate, 17 determination, you know, I love the holy trio there. Resolute personality, and again, like Gutierrez, 18 years Years old, three million pound, three year deal. We'll see how he gets on over time. But they are going to get a bit more exciting, trust me. Uh, so next one, Emmanuel Marquesano, uh, once again, 18 years old. You might wonder why I tend not to sign new gen slash regions that are 19 or older. The reason why is because if you sign them at 18 or younger, uh, they can become homegrown and trained at your club if you keep them there for three straight years, which again is very crucial for European squad registration. That's why I prefer 18 years old or younger um, as opposed to anything older than that. But so yeah, Marcusano uh, looks pretty decent. Uh, quick off the mark, 17 acceleration, 15 pace, 15 agility, very handy on a winger as well. With 20 determination, 16 teamwork, you know I love to see that. And technically it's not bad either with 12 crossing, 11 dribbling, first touch 12, 13 passing, and 15 technique as well. Signing from Inter Milan for £6.5 million. And again, one to watch for the future. Looks pretty decent. Should we go have a couple of real players now? Yeah, let's do it. So, okay, from last season, we managed to bring him back on a permanent deal. Brandon Williams has arrived on a five-year contract from Manchester United. Now, of course, last season he came in, and one of the keys as to why I was happy having Brandon Williams here is because he can play both left-back and right-back. And, you know, consistently, he was pretty decent. Whether I played him on either side, he was pretty decent and again he's got a perfectionist personality which you know I love mentally really really solid all across the board technically not bad when going forward or when defending at the back and physically pretty quick off the mark with decent stamina and natural as well again being a natural in both the left back and the right back is so so crucial and I love the versatility so Williams in it's only 40 grand a week it's a five year deal and there's, there's very little negative to Williams other than the fact he dreads playing in big matches maybe that's why he was 
wasn't that great in the FA Cup final. But yeah, as a, as a fullback, he's 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 pretty decent. And again, left back and right back, I love the versatility. And speaking of loan players returning. Oh my goodness gracious me, fourth straight year Francisco Trincao returns on a one-year loan deal for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Yeah, there's no there's no future fee, it's not going to happen, and once again, we're not paying a monthly fee either, we're just paying his wage. He's been really consistently decent in the past three years, I'm sure he will be once again. So again, it's 140 grand a week, no monthly fee, the only difference this time is that he can be recalled by Barcelona, couldn't get rid of that clause, but hopefully they'll uh, I'll let him stay here for the full year. But yeah, Trincao back on loan. Hashtag forever alone. But to be fair, if we just keep paying his wages, then at the moment we're quids in right now. Not enough to pay a massive fee to bring him in permanently. But uh, Trincao, he, he loves Wolves, by the way. He's got Wolves in his favourite personnel, uh, favourite clubs now, along with me in the favourite personnel too. So he's fine coming back year after year on loan. And once again, Trincao arriving for a one-year loan. And I'm pretty sure next season, it'll happen again. But I don't mind one bit. So two more regions to show you. I wasn't sure which one to show you first, but I must say this might well be the most exciting of the final two. I'm very optimistic about this guy's future. Now, I spent a pretty penny to bring him here from Roma. His name is Francesco Viscardi, and I absolutely love this guy's stats. Now, last season, Roma loaned him out to the Serie B, and he got nine goals in 34, which isn't too bad for such a young striker at just 18 years old. He's got a driven personality. He's got some decent physical stats with 14 accelerations, uh, 14 stamina, 15 natural fitness, and 14 jumping. I'd like his strength to be increased, uh, considering the fact he's 6 foot 5, so a giant in the air. And mentally, some very decent stats indeed already for such a young striker. 15 composure, 14 decisions, 20 determination, 15 off the ball, 16 work rate as well. And technically, too, 15 finishing, 16 first touch. Not bad at all for a striker. I always feel about the most three important stats of finishing first touching off the ball and at just 18 years old to have all three of those 15 or higher plus the 15 composure as well this is pretty exciting I'm not gonna lie so again we signed him for 12 million pounds pretty pricey deal for just an 18 year old but he does look pretty exciting four-year contract and again, we've got Fabio Silva as the Wonder Kid striker already. Raul Jimenez is still here for now, with a year left in his contract. But this guy, I've got to say, I'm very excited. He'll definitely get some game time this season. And the final teenager is this guy right here. It is Miguel Dino. Not entirely sure how you pronounce that. That's probably the wrong pronunciation. But uh, still, once again, another 18-year-old coming in. He is a French centre-half we signed from Monaco for a very cheap deal, actually, uh, of just £3.2 million in the summer. And again, this guy looks pretty decent. Like Viscardi, you know, one to watch for the future. Um, it seems to be like centre-mid is what defaults to his primary position. But of course, that's not right. That should be centre-back. Um, he's six foot three. Like Viscardi, hopefully he'll get stronger with time. But at moment he's quite well balanced physically uh, mentally not bad either the 10 composure does concern me but 16 bravery 16 determination 17 teamwork and 17 work rate as well you know i love that 12 position not the best but again the technicals will certainly improve in time and uh, again as a young center half I don't know why, but I'm putting my faith in this guy as our third choice this year. 18 years old, now Connor Cody's gone. Haven't looked to sign a replacement centre-half for him. This guy is probably going to be our third choice. Then again, it might actually be someone different, depending if I position change him to a ball-playing defender. You, you know I love ball-playing defenders. And there's one of two players I could do that with this season, including the penultimate signing I'll show you of the window in from Manchester United. And you know I'm absolutely buzzing about this one. I had him in my Cardiff save. And oh man, I'm such a huge fan of the guy in real life. And do you know why? Because he's a bloody workhorse. Yes, welcome to Molyneux. Scott McTominay buzzing with this one. Now, he was transfer listed by the Red Devils in January. And I think they wanted like 45 mil. I'm not going to lie. I was considering it because we had the cash back in January. But in the end, I thought, Do you know what? If we wait until the summer, I'm pretty sure we'll get him on a cheaper deal. And that's what we did. 31 mil is what we paid for the Manchester United Academy graduate. Barely played um, in the save, to be honest. But... He, he'll he get a bit more game time here, I think. And I, I love this guy, man. He's so tall. He's very good physically. Um, this guy really looks after his body really, really well. Mentally great. Technically not bad either. And I'm so happy to have him in. So model citizen personality. Six foot four. 17 stamina. 16 natural fitness. 17 jumping as well. I think the strength should be a little bit higher. But even so, mentally really great. Very aggressive. Very brave. Good anticipation. Not bad concentration. And again, the holy trio right here. 17 determined 
on the nation. 18 teamwork and 18 work rate. Yeah, you know, I'd love to see that. And technically, too, a uh, pretty decent one on the ball. You know, he's got 14 for first touch with 13 passing, 12 technique aren't bad either. And again, defensively, 12 for marking and 15 tackling as well. Very decent indeed. So primarily used as either a ball winner midfielder or a box-to-box -box midfielder. I am thinking with his height and his range of stats, he could be a centre-half in this team. I definitely think he could be as the years go on. But even so, for now, he probably will be a backup ball-winning midfielder. He was Scott Tom and Ian, with his mental stats, you know I had to bring him in. It's a five-year deal, 70 grand a week, and I'm I'm very happy with this one, man. Welcome to Molyneux, baby. And so my last signing of the nine in what was a very expensive window was our second most expensive signing of the window, right behind Scott McTominay. And he's coming to Molyneux. Again, yes, welcome back. And I said earlier, you probably knew who it was going to be after I sold Daniel Pedence. I talked about him in the season finale. Put on a transfer list by Liverpool and returning to Wolves after three years at Anfield. Welcome back, Diogo Jota. So, yeah, Liverpool transfer listed him uh, towards the end of last season for £27 million. Pounds. So after the three years he spent there, he barely played last season. And most of his games came from the bench overall as well. The season before that, though, when he got a little bit more game time it was a bit more prolific and the season before that he was pretty decent as well once again though sharing a lot of game time coming off the bench so yeah he was okay for Liverpool not disastrous never normally ordinarily a first choice starter so we'll start, uh, sorry Liverpool side to sell him we bring him back and for 27 million that's great man seriously that's that's 15.5 mil less than what Wolves got for him when they sold him a few years ago. So Diogo Jota arriving, it's a five-year deal, 85 grand a week, pretty pricey, but very decent player indeed. So physically, as a winger, he's very agile indeed, as primarily an inverted or inside forward, with 15 acceleration, 15 pace, and 16 agility as well. You know, mentally, pretty decent too, 15 composure, 13 decisions. I love the 17 determination with 17 flair, and a 17 off the ball. Off the ball is a really underrated stat on a winger as well, uh, with some decent work rate too and technically as well you know he's a very good driller the balls we all know 16 dribbling and a great finisher as well with 16 finishing 14 first touch and 14 technique as well now he can play on both sides of the wing as we know but also he has been deployed previously under club as a striker as well and again the good finishing the, the good dribbling and the fantastic off the ball and pace as well there's no reason he couldn't do that in this team and be a third choice striker behind Silva and Jimenez as well. So I think this is a great signing, man. Again, just 27 million to bring him back. He's got European experience at Liverpool, won the Champions League, of course, this summer as well. Won the Premier League, won the Carabao Cup. So winner's experience alongside some great stats as well on a cut price deal. That's a really decent signing, in my opinion. To be honest here, it was a busy window, and in the end, quite an expensive one. Our most expensive of the save thus far. 83 mil, but actually with the Brandon Williams deal, it's 91. In fact, 91.65 million in the summer. So our most expensive window so far by quite some distance. But after what happened in the uh, season finale and our run towards the end of the season, I felt, you know what, we've, we've got to make some moves now. We've got to bring in some decent players. We've, again, winner's experience. That's really crucial because clearly we've been lacking in that after what happened last season. And again, also... I felt we needed a bit of a change and some youngsters coming in to watch for the future as well. So our bank balance has decreased quite a bit. We're now down to 68.6 million pounds. And as you can see, our budget is now down to 18.8 mil. I don't think we'll do any more moves now in the summer. I think we're done. But some interesting things going on behind the scenes with Wolves. I'll show you our wage bill, by the way, as it continues to steadily increase. We're now up to 1.7 mil. The interesting thing behind the scenes of Wolves is that we are expanding the stadium. Yes, Molyneux is not the biggest of stadiums. I think the capacity is around 30,000, something around there. So, because we're now playing in Europe and should be consistently now, at the very least, a Europa League side, we're expanding it to around 35,000 uh, 35, seats. I think it's going to be, where are we here, it should say. Uh, no, it doesn't. But it's going to be around 35,000 uh, seats at some point. I believe. So, um, yeah, there we go. Some interesting changes behind the scenes and with the club signings coming in as well. So season by season, as I show you the assistant report here, we continue to increase our list of strengths and eradicate the weaknesses we currently have in the team. Just four weaknesses now to this side. And as for the strengths, we just get more and more of these season by season. And as for the squad depth as well, 
Well, I've got to be honest here, I think it's decent. There's a lot less depth in the centre-back row, that's for sure. We could probably do with a safer pair of hands on the bench than Marcus Bettinelli. But other than that, I'm reasonably okay. Again, defensively, you could say there's a little bit of a lack of depth there, particularly, again, in the centre-half role. But for the, most, for the most part, especially in the CM area and on the wings as well, I think we've got a really decent amount of depth. So we should be able to cope with the strain of playing Thursday night football in the Europa League this season. I think I might have already spoiled it for you with who's become our new club captain here, but I think you know who it was going to be. As you can see, no player issues within the team. Thankfully, Ruben Neves has dropped his uh, request to leave and go somewhere else. He'll be staying here. Uh, the team cohesion is excellent. The club atmosphere is maxed out, and the managerial support isn't bad either. And as for the club hierarchy, now that Connor Cody has left, Rui Patricio has now taken place as a team leader in this team, alongside Ruben and Raul Jimenez as well. But as for the captain, you know it was going to be this guy, of course. More than force be given the armband. And you know what? It's not a novelty. And unlike with Jason, where he didn't really have the stats or, you know, the feel to back it up. He just did it because he was just an alpha. He was just an alpha male. And that's why I gave him the captain's armband and kissed his feet whilst I was doing it. Morton Forsby is totally different. He's ridiculously versatile. He'll play wherever if you ask him to. And again, with the physicality and with the holy trio. And leadership isn't bad either at 13 to... To me, it just seemed like the natural choice. He's the iron man of this team. He's always practically the first man on the team sheet. And since he's come in, I mentioned it, he's not been a novelty. He's been in the first 11 on merit. He's been consistently brilliant ever since he signed for us and has barely ever put a foot wrong apart from a few red cards, which we won't talk about. But yeah, Morton Forsby, club captain. And I gotta say, we needed a change this season. I'm giving it to my guy, Morton Forsby, the iron man. He is the new club captain at Wolves. So I'll show you a brief look at the preseason and also the competition overview expectations as well. Uh, largely impressive preseason for the most part, only lost twice, and of course had a couple of testosterone flying wins. Though the, the first testosterone flying win, we only won four 0 which I don't know. Let's just be honest here. That's quite a low-scoring game for a game where we're supposed to thrash our opponents and yeah, just get our, uh, our juices flowing. But um, anyway, uh, yeah, you can see our fixtures to start off this season. Like in Season 2, it's a tough one. We're beginning with Man City away, Everton home, and Spurs away, who pipped us to fourth last season. So just like Season 2, tough beginning to the campaign. I must say. As for the competition expectations uh, for this season, as you can see, uh, in the Carabao Cup, reached the quarter final. Though we don't care about that. FA Cup last year got to the final. Let's not talk about what happened in the final, but reached the quarter final this season. Uh, Europa League reached a second knockout round, which I, I think is definitely doable with this Wolves team. And as for the Premier League as well, what I really like is that whilst we're now trying to be no lower than seventh or sixth in the table, this is where I would say we should be aiming to finish at the absolute lowest. The board aren't recognising that, and they're now just saying top half. I really like the fact they've reduced our expectations in the Premier League. And as the season preview, the media think we will finish again in seventh place. The traditional top six, that barely ever changes in the media preview. Man City last season finished in mid-table. But again, this season they're now back up to third. So we're regarded as the best of the rest, if you will, uh, in the Premier League thus far. Um, so yeah, is there anything else to show you? I'm not entirely sure. I guess I could show you the staff. We've improved our staff once again. And as I always say, this is um, this is really, really important. You want the best coaching staff you can get. Um, and obviously, if you get great under-18s and under-23 staff too, that will lead to some quicker, uh, quicker development from your players uh, and improvements in their attributes as well at a young age. But I think that's basically it. So let's just dive into the first game of the new season. It is indeed Man City away, who again last season had a really, really poor campaign in the Premier League. Again, they finished in mid-table, um, which was just a, a real surprise. Now again, of course, for, for a long time, they were actually like here. And having a chance they might end up getting relegated, but they sort of had a good kick on towards the end of the season to finish in top 10. But I don't think that's going to happen this season. So facing them away at the Etihad Stadium, not entirely confident, but let's see how we get on. So from pre-season, no one's come back, come back injured. This is our team, 4-2. 3-1. Patricia's in goal. Back for is like Nuri. Eric, Big Chris and Samadu. Neves and the new club captain force me through the middle. Trey or entering Cowdy inside forwards and Buendia sports Jimenez up top. One of which Bettinelli, McTominay, Williams, Ward, Prowse, Diego Jota, Nato and Silva as well. First and only game today. Season open at the Etihad Stadium. Despite the struggles last season, I can't see us winning. Come on Wolves.
I had three different players I was considering for the captaincy. They were Rui Patricio, who of course is always going to start our games between the sticks. Uh, it was Ruben Neves, of course, the vice captain, and who I eventually gave it to, uh, Morton Forsby. The reason I opted against Patricio is because this might well be one of his final years as our starting goalkeeper. He is now 35 years old, so we are going to be looking for... It's, what a great block there, and then Patricia makes a great save right on cue, looking for a, a younger goalkeeper to come in for, to replace him for the long term. Um, and of course for Ruben Neves, there was obviously lots of interest he was going to leave, there was an issue within himself, issue within himself, there was an issue where he wanted to leave the club and go to a, a bigger team, and as I mentioned before, like I, I never like a captain who wants to abandon his side, you know, um, so yeah, that's why I, I decided to go with Morton Forsby, and I think I made the right choice personally. Well, 10 minutes to go until the break. And I tell you what, I'd certainly take this on the open day. Goalless draw at the Etihad Stadium despite their struggles last season. This will be this will be a good result. I'll have this one. Long way to go, though. Very long way to go. Second half only just began. And as Kessie has some space, he'll dink it to Jao Cancelo, who hits it off the post and force puts it behind for a corner. I, I tell you, I, I think that's always going to be a thing in FM. You know, we talk about it year after year. It's always in the game. Players shooting from the goal line and always seeming to either hit the post or just hit it straight at a goalkeeper. It's, it's just, <laughs> I think it's like coded into the game. It will just never change. It's just one of those like really low IQ type of things that players would do. You know, like shooting from that angle is like, it's, it's almost impossible <laughs> to actually squeeze it in because of the laws of physics. But anyway, 20 minutes to go, still nil-nil. And again, I'd, I'd have this every day of the week. Six minutes to go. Man City looking for the winner. Oh, and Patricio makes the save. Oh. We'll have to replace him at some point. He'll be 40 and still starting in goal for us at this point. But as we're still deadlocked here, Samedo clears. I think Man City are going to score late and win this one. It seems to always happen to me in this year's FM. Samedo clears, but danger not fully away. It just always seems to happen. I'd say like every every three games, I would say. <laughs> Against one of the big boys. Every, every two or three games, this happens. Joe Gomez turns into prime Ian Robin, and the former Liverpool and Charlton defender has given Man City the win. Shades of Ian Robin, <laughs> Joe Gomez the winner. It's just, it's just what happens to me in this year's FM. Dis and VAR decisions going against me. I don't know why I even think it could be anything different. It's just, it just always happens. I'm sick of it. Absolutely sick of it. Didn't play that badly, the hosts probably were the better team, all things considered, but it's just it's just it's just something that always happens to me in this year's FM. It happened in the Fulham save and it happens in the Wall save as well. City win it late on, Joe Gomez the unlikely hero. It's just going to be another season of pure frustration, isn't it? Why would I expect anything different? But that was today's episode of the FM Reboot, guys. Big thank you for watching the season. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, then please do drop a like. Uh, most love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And I think what we'll do is we'll come back with the Europa League group stage draw, which I think will be coming around here. And then we'll come back with the first game, which again will be around here, plus one of Newcastle away, Burnley at home, or West Ham at home as well. Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode of the FM Reboot. Very soon.